15 Best Cartoon Shows from the 2000s, The Last Great Era for Cartoons If you happen to be a cartoon purist, the chances are that you consider the 80s and the 90s to be the golden era of cartoons. Indeed, it was a time of classics, and weekends never felt much better than when we waited patiently for our favorite episodes to unravel. While we aren't here to compare different eras, we have to admit that we have a soft spot for 2000s cartoon shows as well, at least some of them. It's not an exaggeration to claim that this is the last great era for cartoon shows, because it has been a rather downhill journey since then. The quality has dropped to a great extent, and we can confidently claim that not many contemporary cartoon shows will be remembered for decades. However, today, let us not crib over the decay, and instead join us for a journey down memory lane as we bring you the best cartoon shows from the 2000s. Good old nostalgia never disappoints, does it? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Justice League 2001 to 2004. The dream team comprising the most formidable superheroes is here to protect the world, and you can be sure that the Earth needs plenty of protection with the kinds of threats awaiting them. As protectors, you have the likes of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern, Hawk Girl, and The Martian Manhunter. And enemies are so strong that individually the superheroes don't stand a chance. They are united as the forces of moral purity, and the Justice League is up against all forms of evil, from intergalactic forces to dangerous crooks who are looking to exploit the innocents on Earth. There is a popular belief that this show is a more accurate portrayal of the DC Universe than some of its predecessors, such as Super Friends. The way most of the characters are drawn will remind you of the Golden Age comic books, and in terms of quality, this show could give the Hanna-Barbera hits a run for their money. When the show was being created, Bruce Timm had the idea of using a uniformed look in the costumes of the superheroes, but the then DC president didn't agree to it for characters like Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. This was the first time that an animated show featured the Martian Manhunter, and Justice League made use of some of the other underrated heroes and villains, which made people familiar with some of the lesser known DC characters. The show comes equipped with some terrific storylines, and the superb animation only adds to its charm. Kevin Conroy as Batman steals the show once again, and The Flash has some crucial moments in the show along with some of his strongest adversaries, such as Captain Cold, Mirror Master, etc. The writers have often explored a more human side to these superheroes, and that is something fun to watch. There are even occasional rifts between the superheroes, and we love the ones between Batman and Superman. Samurai Jack, 2001 to 2017. Back in ancient Japan, a troublesome shape-shifting wizard brought in the era of evil, and a young samurai is determined to defeat this powerful lord of darkness. However, Aku sends him thousands of years into the future, and in this dystopian world, everything is under Aku's control. Luckily for the brave samurai warrior, he wielded a powerful magic sword that could harm Aku. He takes up the name Jack and fights Aku's evil forces in the dystopian future with high-end technology and other strange things that the samurai doesn't understand. Can he finally return to his own time and destroy the evil wizard permanently? This wizard work of art has been inspired by Frank Miller's graphic novel Ronin, and the entire premise of a samurai warrior flung ahead in time to a dystopian future is taken from here. One of the most memorable things about the show was how effortlessly the narrative could tell you the story with minimal dialogues. It was created by the same guy credited with classics like Dexter's Laboratory, and Gindi Tartakovsky weaved his magic with this one as well. In fact, after the first four seasons, the show was shifted from Cartoon Network, and this allowed the creators a greater liberty to pin down the plots without any restrictions. It had a more mature content, and the wonderfully organized storyline meant that it drew in more viewers as well. The animation has been consistently amazing, and the writing is always entertaining with bits of humor and intelligent plots. The cartoon series is almost cinematic, and you will soon find yourself deeply involved with the adventures of Jack against all odds. It was truly a godsend for American animation, and the show is still exciting to watch after all these years. We're not five heroes, we're one team. Teen Titans, 2003 to 2006. It is time for the young guns to step up as Robin the Boy Wonder takes charge. He leads a team of young superheroes, the Teen Titans, and he has the likes of alien princess Starfire, Beast Boy, Cyborg, and the Dark Raven as his fellow warriors. Together they take on multiple villains from around the world, but they are still young people at heart and also deal with the usual teenage issues. Watch Robin with his utility belt and his mind leading the way, and the other teen superheroes all have their unique abilities. The show 
brand for five straight seasons, but we believe that it should have enjoyed a longer run. The first thing you will notice about this show is the sheer diversity it offers. You will enjoy some terrific comedy-filled episodes, while others will unfurl loads of drama. There is no shortage of action-packed stuff either, and together they make for the perfect entertainment recipe. The characters were voiced quite appropriately, and we enjoyed their duels against some of the toughest supervillains, such as Slade and his evil minions. Ron Perlman steals the show as the voice of Slade, and there are some tense moments during these showdowns. The comic book lovers will appreciate the quality of the show, even though some things have been changed. The characters are a bit younger, and Robin fits the bill as the stylish leader of the pack. He doesn't have superpowers as such, but he makes up for it with his martial arts skills and his equipments. The anime-inspired artwork looks visually stunning, and the backgrounds are suitably fluid and ethereal. We also enjoyed the rousing and lively music, and there is literally nothing wrong with this underrated gem that deserves a comeback in today's cartoon drought. X-Men Evolution 2000-2003 What do people do when they discover that they have been born with certain special powers? Will they either turn to the temptations of evil or they preserve their moral character by fighting as heroes? Professor Charles Francis Xavier is one such individual who leads the way with his ability to read minds. He identifies new mutants with unique powers and takes them under his wing so that they don't end up hurting themselves or get misguided into joining evil forces. On the other hand, Magneto identifies mutants to fight for his evil purposes. He prepares them for an all-out war against non-mutants while Professor Xavier seeks peaceful coexistence. There is a small twist in the story because both the heroes and villains attend the same high school. Should we say X-Men with a surprise? You could say whatever you want, but it is undeniable that this show defied expectations and turned out to be a classic. There are some changes that did not go down well with fans, but we aren't complaining about the end result. It is an entirely original take on the X-Men lore, and the idea of watching some of our favorite stories retold with a twist is quite appealing. Basically, X-Men Evolution is about the X-Men when they were young teenagers, and it was probably a trick to appeal to the younger audience. A lot of new characters were introduced, and they were explored properly so that the viewers are never left in the dark. You will rediscover characters like Wolverine and Gambit, and Magneto comes across as a truly threatening presence that suits the storyline perfectly. The series scores high in terms of voice acting, and the animation quality is easily at par with the contemporary shows that came back then. You might disagree, but for us, this is the best X-Men cartoon show ever, Claws Down. Ben 10, 2005-2008 For kids growing up during the 2000s, Ben 10 was an emotion. They owned everything from Ben 10 watches to all the hundreds of other merchandise that came along and all because of how attached they felt to the character of young Ben Tennyson. He is just another kid around the block who comes across a mysterious alien device called the Omnitrix. It miraculously changes his boring summer vacation with his grandpa. The watch gives him the power to transform into 10 different deadly alien species, and it comes in handy when he has to deal with some of the multiple adventures along the way. This is the perfect example of how the simplest of premises can have the most wonderful results. Ben 10 is all about Ben transforming into various alien forms, and the life of a simple young boy changing overnight caught the fancy of millions around the world. Initially, it was planned that the Omnitrix would allow Ben to explore alternate versions of himself, but the makers eventually went with the monstrous transformations just to make things catchy. The creature designs look great, and the dialogues are well written, to cater to the viewer base. The voice acting department shines as well, which is somewhat of a necessity for a show to achieve excellence. The main characters are all very likable and relatable, and the villains are absolutely kick-ass, complete with their own unique evil motivations and plans. The existence of extraterrestrial entities has always been a subject of interest, and the idea to use the concept and create something as magical has to be a master stroke. The Spectacular Spider-Man, 2008 to 2009. Stories of the friendly neighborhood superhero never go out of fashion, do they? They were entertaining back in the 80s and they ruled the 2000s era as well. And even today, the Spider-Man movie managed to kick up quite a storm. This particular animated series traces the same familiar story of Peter Parker. The makers focus on the origin once again, and we get a young orphaned Peter struggling with life alongside his old helpless Aunt May. 
Gaining the superpowers, however, changes his life quite a bit and adds more responsibilities. Now he has to fight crime in a flashy costume and also struggle with his everyday life. It promises two seasons of pure joy and this spectacular series will have a special place in our hearts. It is a fitting title because the show is indeed spectacular. Spider-Man has always been one of the most instantly recognizable and empathetic superheroes and the viewers can always connect with his struggles of growing up and shouldering all the responsibilities that come with his powers. The narrative was streamlined, and it was certainly a very effective approach because there was no nonsense in the narrative. The action scenes were fluidly animated and the movements of Spider-Man looked pretty good. The stories have some interesting twists and most of them involve the superhero using some intelligent tricks to defeat the villains. From Electro to the Rhino to Sandman, he had quite a lot to deal with. The narrative also covered the normal life of Peter Parker, and together it was an extremely well-rounded effort. The show certainly deserved a better time slot, and in that case the popularity of the spectacular Spider-Man would have been a lot more. Avatar The Last Airbender, 2005 to 2008. Previously, the world was a harmonious coexistence of water, earth, fire, and air, four elemental nations. However, it all changed following an attack by the Fire Nation. Now, in this war-torn new landscape, only one person can restore order, and it is the Avatar, master of all four elements. Unfortunately, in this time of need, he has vanished mysteriously, and a hundred years pass in all the chaos and violence. Katara and Sokka discover a young boy who has a gift of elemental magic, and this airbender named Aang could potentially be the new Avatar. They help him master the other elements, and together they set out on a dangerous mission to defeat the Fire Nation and bring peace to the world. When we think of Nickelodeon, a lot of wacky shows come to mind, such as Spongebob, Drake and Josh, etc. However, this cartoon series was like a breath of fresh air, and the brilliance of the show made many term it as one of the best Nickelodeon series ever. The characters are detailed and well-written, and the development of the characters over time will blow your mind. Since the show was largely targeted towards a young crowd, they balance the heavy topics with loads of humor and funny bits. You will find deep philosophical interpretations mixed with an entertaining story, and that is precisely the perfect combo. The stunning visuals and quality animation become the cherry on the cake, and the makers did not make any wrong steps while creating this one. Avatar The Last Airbender promises entertainment for all ages, and even today you can go back and relive those wonderful episodes. I am the Grim Reaper! <laughs> the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy 2001 to 2007. You wouldn't think the Grim Reaper to be a fun companion, would you? Well, think again because this show thrives on the premise that two friends, Billy and Mandy, have managed to win a limbo contest against him. Now the Grim Reaper with a foul temper has to be their friend, and it means numerous adventures together where the most ridiculous things unfold. Billy and Mandy aren't exactly perfectionists, and they often create a mess that needs to be sorted by Hoss Delgado, another interesting character in the mix of things. Watching their fun escapades unravel before you can be a genuine stress buster, and this show has timeless content that will be enjoyed for years to come. Something weird doesn't necessarily have to be bad. If you observe the premise of this show, you will realize that the creators are not exactly trying to be rational, but the best part is that you wouldn't care one bit because the narrative never falls short on entertainment. Watching Billy and Mandy torment the Grim Reaper with their antics is hilarious, and all the credit to the developers who could take something as harrowing as death and turn it into something enjoyable. The jokes are always on point, and we aren't among those who criticize the show for its morbid sense of humor. You will not find any high-end cheesy animation, but the concept doesn't really demand such stuff in the first place. The clever plot makes sure that viewers are drawn into the story right from the word go, and everything is commendably imaginative. This is a show where intimidating characters are made lovable, and if you are in the need of a few quick laughs, we highly recommend you go ahead and check this one out. Batman the Brave and the Bold 2008 to 2011. In a way, this is something of an updated animated series that is based on the extensive Batman lore, and this time around, the caped crusader isn't alone. In this particular animated interpretation of Batman, he is helped by some capable partners from the DC Universe, like Green Arrow, Blue Beetle, Aquaman, and many others. Some of the well-known Batman crooks are added again, and he has to fight the likes of Joker, Two-Face, the Riddler, Scarecrow, and Ra Shao Ghul. To fight these formidable enemies, he has to rely on his cool gadgets and fighting techniques, and also count on the help of other heroes from time to time. For those who have witnessed the change of Batman from a campy superhero to the Dark Knight, it has been a wholesome journey indeed. 
This animated series, for instance, offers a refreshing take on the Batman universe, and it is supposed to be a fun tribute to the Silver Age of comics. The makers have embraced the campy nature on one hand, and also added some cleverly written serious scripts to balance it out. It does lack the kind of darkness that many associate with Batman, but if you are willing to look beyond the sophisticated edge, you have yourself a clear winner. The Bruce Timm version spoiled us a bit too much and set the standards very high, but it is heartening to see a show that still breathes life into superhero animation. This Batman series handled the largest cast of DC characters ever seen on television till 2012, and they managed the variety quite nicely. Go ahead and revisit the innocent comic era of the 40s, 50s, and 60s with this one, and as long as you don't judge the comedic tone, you will have a blast. What's new, Scooby-Doo? 2002 to 2006. Scooby-Doo was another of those evergreen cartoon phenomena that never gets old. The Scooby Gang is back in action, and wherever there seems to be some kind of spooky or paranormal occurrences, the team is there to investigate. Scooby, Shaggy, Fred, Velma, and Daphne always find a way to get to the bottom of the cases, and they usually identify and nab the one responsible for their conspiracies. Yes, the theme is all too familiar, but what will win your hearts instantly is how the 21st century Scooby-Doo adventures manage to replicate the flavor of the good old days with a new spark. Is this show a step down from the classic Hanna-Barbera style of cartoon that many have been used to? Well, that is a debate for another time, but we have to say that the changes don't necessarily hurt the quality in this case. The new colorful and bright style of animation works just fine, and the stories have certainly gotten funnier. The characters are tried and tested, and the makers simply kept the charm going without changing much. The voice actors are quite suitable, and Scooby-Doo in a modern setting is still as entertaining as before. If we have to complain about one thing, it will probably be Scooby not really getting a major slice of the role, but everything else works like magic. Overall, the show deserves to be appreciated even though it moves away from the classic Hanna-Barbera productions, because it retains all the elements that made the show great back in the day. With me. Codename Kids Next Door, 2002 to 2008. The story is centered around five 10 year olds who enjoy the thrills of doing the exact things that they are forbidden. It is almost like a unified force against adulthood, a group that defies orders and restrictions and enjoys their lives to the fullest. They embark upon numerous adventures, many of which are on the behalf of children everywhere. The kids also come up against some obnoxious adults who are more like the villains in this narrative. They deal with issues that random 10 year olds face everywhere, such as being forced to go to summer camp and clashing with adults over the boundaries set for them for every fun activity. This series is all about the rebellious side of kids and it comes with some colorful adventures that will remind you of the best days of your life. Kiddish you might say, and we cannot deny it, but sometimes we find joy in the childish endeavors and we certainly did as children, so full marks to this cartoon series for exploiting that to the fullest. In fact, adults enjoyed the show just as much as their children did. The wide ranging comedy appealed to all age groups and while the animation might not be the finest you've seen, it still does a decent job. The storytelling never feels like it has been randomly thrown together, even though it is basically a compilation of random hilarious events in a kid's life. The narratives do make use of some stereotypical characters, but that is obviously the easiest way for the viewers to relate to them. The voice acting is not exactly award worthy, but these are only minor flaws that you can afford to overlook. If you haven't watched this original concept full of fun parodies, you don't know what you're missing out on. You're the ride. You all sign the waivers, right? Phineas and Ferb, 2007 to 2015. Phineas and Ferb are stepbrothers who find some inventive and fun things to do during their summer vacation. They turn their backyard into the hub for all their exciting experiments and cool inventions. Unfortunately, their elder sister Candace is not exactly a part of their plans, and she is always a threat who can rat them out to their mother. Meanwhile, they have a rather interesting pet, Perry the Platypus, who leads a double life and is a secret agent. Perry is always plotting against the evil Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz, and every day is a colorful adventure in this bizarre world. You know that the efforts behind the show are special when it takes the creator 16 long years to finally get it on television. It was the longest running Disney animated show, and the extensive run is courtesy of the relatable and simple premise. There are some dark theories regarding the family background of these characters, but that is a discussion for another time. Phineas and Ferb is a criminally underrated show, and it is totally worth your time to watch the two brothers put together a elaborate gadgets, such as the time machine or a roller coaster. Even the animation style has been kept simple, 
and it is a perfect example of how versatile a show dedicated to kids can be. The series got cancelled prematurely because the makers did not want to overstay their welcome. The goal was to go out strong, and it deserves a special appreciation to have that kind of restraint. Wolverine and the X-Men, 2008 to 2009. Following a terrible explosion at their school, the X-Men had gone their separate ways. Now with the new crisis arising, it is time for them to reunite. The school has been attacked by some unknown forces and Professor X has vanished under mysterious circumstances. Wolverine tries to get the old team back and they soon realize that they have an uphill task at hand, preventing an inevitable war. They do find the professor in a comatose state, but he manages to contact them from the future where he is conscious. The X-Men have new challenges to deal with and their special powers are all they have to settle the consequences. This is a more serious take on the X-Men and the stories actually go surprisingly deep for a children's cartoon show. The creators handle the characters quite nicely and even explain many of their origins. There are some subtle changes that you will notice. For instance, Gambit is truly evil in this version and he would do just about anything to benefit himself, even to the extent of betraying all mutants. Wolverine has some stark similarities with Hugh Jackman's portrayal in the movies and the overall story takes heart from the X-Men comics. There is great continuity in the narrative and it continues throughout the series. It does have a fair share of comic elements and the die-hard X-Men fans are sure to enjoy this one. The only terrible thing about the show is the random and abrupt cancellation, but such was the trend of the hour and there were many others who fell prey to the cancel culture. Star Wars Clone Wars 2003 to 2005 the story takes you to the events before the rise of the Galactic Empire. Basically, the narrative follows the events of Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones, and you see the Separatists launching their battle droids. The Republic has enough of an arsenal to blow them away, and even Jedi Master Yoda and Mace Windu are a part of this battle. Will the Republic prevail, or will there be a new dawn in the sequence of events? Whatever is the outcome, it is slated to be the Jedi Council's finest hour, and the war is going to change the galaxy forever. This has to be one of the best of prequel era Star Wars, and it is a shame that Disney had this scrapped from the Star Wars canon. What is so special about this show you might wonder? Well for starters, it drives closer to the classic Star Wars from the early days, and the serialized action adventure is always going to attract the fans. Secondly, the characters portrayed here turn out to be a lot better than in the live action prequel films. The stylized animation works wonders, and the later longer running show The Clone Wars certainly benefited from this. The music will leave you spellbound, and it is a perfect fit for the cartoon. The space battles and epic lightsaber fights look absolutely epic, and both the casual and the hardcore fans will be pleased by the outcome. If you take the time to check out this one, we can bet that you will not be disappointed. Kim Possible, 2002. This is not the Kim you want, but the Kim you deserve. Keeping jokes apart, this show is a refreshing take on a secret supergirl Kim Possible, who is just another average high school student. However, she is also a skilled fighter who protects the world from evil supervillains. She also has her accomplices and her friend Ron Stoppable, and his pet Rufus are her constant companions. She is also helped by a skilled webmaster, Wade, and they set out on secret missions, completely hidden from the rest of the world. But the supervillains are not her only concerns, because in her everyday life, she also has to deal with the usual teenage issues, such as school trouble and social life. Well, nothing really is perfect, is it? The show does come with its fair share of flaws, but instead of harping on the shortcomings, let us focus on the things that made this enjoyable. There are some great voice actors in this project, and their skills are for all to see. The narrative is hysterically funny, and the jokes will appeal to people across all age groups. This is certainly a great accomplishment for Disney, and in terms of TV cartoons, this is one show they can be proud of after Gargoyles. Kim is quite a lovable character, and her best friend come sidekick Ron Stoppable adds most of the humor to the story. The overall plot might sound cliched, but the intelligent writing makes sure that it is one of the most quotable cartoon series ever, with some great lines in the script. Back in the day, it was easily the best show on the Disney Channel, and they certainly don't make shows like these anymore. There's a reason why we dubbed the 2000s as the last great era of cartoons, and the reason is simple. You will not find such quality shows after this decade. We are always hoping against hope, 
we are always hoping against hope for the situation to get better in the near future. But as of now, all you can do is go back and enjoy a slice of those good old days. And these evergreen cartoon shows are just the right means for that. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.